What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, we are going to be redoing this boy. And it isn't for any particular reason other than the fact that I just wasn't happy with that finish. If you can see here, it just had a lot of white in the grain still and I just wasn't happy with it. So I went ahead and sanded it down. But when I sanded it down, I realized that there was still a lot of veneer damage that was done by the um, previous owner and like there was holes in it and it just got worse when I sanded over it. So I got this kit off of Amazon. I'll make sure to include it in the description below. And I'm just gonna show you guys how to repair the burnt veneer. For this, it's a little bit difficult because it's, I don't know what happened to the, this particular part, but um, the texture of it is different because it's burned through the veneer and down to the wood underneath. So it's, it's just like, raw textured wood that's going the opposite way as the grain and so I kind of just had to work with that but the first thing that we want to do is just get a good base color and I'm doing this by using yellow sandalwood color and I'm just blending it into the base and uh, you know just trying to get the base going and then we're gonna go over it and get some different layers of different colors and stuff to match up with the the darker wood grains um, but yeah, it's just a lot of blending. Unfortunately, when I looked up how to repair burnt veneer, um, or like, you know, burn through veneer, I couldn't find anything besides this method. I couldn't find anything on like, other than like replacing the entire piece of veneer. <laughs> but I, I just didn't have the budget for that, um, for this piece, unfortunately. But you can do that, you can just take off the old veneer and buy new veneer to match your piece and then replace the whole thing. But I found that this was just much more effective and much more eco-friendly, so I went with this method. So you can't replace like the chunk of veneer with a, a thing this big and it's, it's just hard to get a really professional finish and to get one piece of veneer flowing, you know, flawlessly into the next. So I just used the paint method and uh, did a lot of blending. Um, and you can, what's really cool about this kit is that you can do different um, shades of paint like you can mix your own to get the exact kind of color that you need so i just fiddled around and kind of messed around with the coloring of everything and did it until i liked the look of it and remember this stuff is going to dry darker than it looks going on so like this looks light right now but when it dries this is it dry <laughs> so it dries a lot darker and this is me kind of, again, just fiddling around with the different colors and trying to get the different shades right. So be patient and build upon your colors to, you know, get it until it's, uh, until it's right. So kind of halfway through, I decided that I was just going to go ahead and fill this in. It was just just deep enough that I could warrant wood filler. And then once it dried, I just went over there with uh, the natural stain that I used, which was a walnut stain, and then I continued on with the layering. Also, this stuff dries pretty slowly, so it is easy just to wipe it off and restart, which is kind of what I did here. I just wiped off a, a part of it that I didn't really care for and, um, you know, started over again. It comes off pretty easily and also before you begin doing this process you really want to make sure that you stain beforehand. You want to get your wood looking the way that you want it to look first and then you want to paint it to match the already stained wood and then you can put your top coat and all that stuff on later but yeah you want to make sure that everything is stained first and then you paint to match. And right now I'm going in for the stripes and I'm using a combination of, you know, painting and then going in with my finger. And a little bit later I actually bring a toothbrush into the mix and I kind of, you know, just streak it with that and make it look a little bit more like wood. 
Um, unfortunately, that, you know, rough patch of wood underneath is not going away and the texture of it is definitely all wrong. But uh, we made it look like wood as much as we possibly could. And then for these little guys, these guys were much easier to do because they were so, so thin. So I just had to match the color and then they basically just disappeared into the wood. It got to the point where once they dried, I couldn't even tell that they were there. But this is what it was like before. And here is the after. And keep in mind the iPhone definitely highlights it a lot more than it looks in person. You honestly really can't see it unless you know that it was there before. And then you're not even, you know, on the lookout for it. And it just perfectly blends in and you really only see it if you like really look for it. Um, but yeah. It, it's, you know, the best solution that I have found so far for burnt veneer. But anyways, I hope that you guys found this useful and go forth and use it on your own burnt veneer, but hopefully you're using proper sanding techniques to avoid that altogether. Make sure to check out my veneer tutorial. That has a whole bunch of tips and tricks to avoid burnt veneer. But anyways, stay tuned for the next video and uh, stay flipping, guys.